Matt. Steven Trout enters his second season as the head coach at Texas State after being named to the position on July 1st, 2019. In his time leading the Bobcat program, he has a record of 14 and four overall. Trout is in his eighth season with the Bobcats after serving as an associate head coach from 2018 to 2019, assistant coach 2016 to 2017, and a volunteer assistant in 2009 and 10. The 2020 season saw Texas State start off with a 14 and four record before the COVID-19 pandemic forced the cancellation of the rest of the year. It was the best start of the program since 2011 and by a first year head coach in Bobcat history. The record was also the best of any Sunbelt Conference program entering conference play. In 2019, Trout helped guide Texas State to its first ever Sunbelt Conference regular season championship. The team finished in the top half of 13 different offensive categories in the conference while recording top five program mark in doubles, 118, walks, 301. The Bobcats also set a program record with a .977 fielding percentage, the 29th best in the nation. Coach Trout also spent three years as an assistant coach at West Virginia University, and he also served as the head coach at Texarkana College. Coach Trout was a volunteer assistant at Houston under Todd Whiting. Coach is a native of Hooks, Texas. Trout earned a bachelor's degree in general studies from TCU in 2007. He is married to the former Blair Eckerly, Daniel. The couple has one daughter, Ellison Elizabeth. Guys, it's a good dude. My pleasure to introduce Coach Stephen Trout. trying to get there. We'll get there going. Uh, first, to the association, appreciate, appreciate you guys having us out. Uh, this is my second time coming to this, so this is also that you guys uh, put this together and, and uh, celebrate you guys as high school coaches. And uh, first, my staff, uh, Chad Massingale is our pitching coach. Uh, Chad's been, actually played at Texas State, um, has been with me since 2018, I believe. Uh, it was a huge part. So if there's any pitching questions, that's our head coach of the pitchers right there. So, Chad, appreciate you coming tonight. Uh, two of the guys who couldn't make it tonight, Josh Blakely, who's our recruiting coordinator, and Jerry Cervantes, um, who's our volunteer assistant. Um, and so, I, as you guys know, as a head coach, you're, you're only as good as your staff. And, and I, I'll put my staff up against anybody um, in the country. So they do a phenomenal job. Um, you know, when you have a team of, of 35, and obviously this year with COVID, we have a lot more. you gotta, you got to trust your guys. And uh, those guys do a phenomenal job. Um, on that side of it. So uh, the one thing about the high school coaches that uh, Coach Harrington, uh, the, as you all know, uh, who had the head job before me, always instilled uh, in our recruiting was the relationship with the high school coaches. And I think that's something that's very important um, as now a lot of our players are playing so much select baseball and in the fall and in the spring or in the summer that they're, they're with their select guys all the time, which are very important. That's where we're gonna see our guys mostly because I don't like missing games. Our recruiting guy, Chad, they don't like missing games because our games are important. And so uh, we have to have those relationships. But the relationships we have uh, with you high school coaches are, are so important. Every time we recruit a guy, uh, we try to reach out to you guys to understand what kind of person we're getting. We know what kind of player we're normally getting, uh, but to us it's really important in the recruiting process, what kind of person are we getting? You guys see them in the classroom, you see them in the hallway, you see them with other classmates. Um, and to us it's really important. So um, I appreciate what you guys do for baseball and uh, it's, it's really nice when guys walk in and understand the game um, at this level. And so uh, getting into the presentation, uh, I still run our offense, still coach our hitters. Um, and so to me, it's really important understanding how to develop an offense. I think each year we sit down as a staff, uh, of course we get to recruit our guys, but we like to sit down and figure out what, how are we gonna score runs? Well, at the end of the day, no matter how good a hitters you have, at the end of the day you have to score runs. Um, and so figuring out which guys we have, are we guys that run more, the guys that are gonna hit home runs, hit doubles, uh, we, we try to sit down and build our offense based on our personnel. And each year it's gonna change. Uh, this is kind of the general philosophy we go by um, at Texas State. And so talking about trying to develop the individual hitter. And I think that's really important. Uh, we're gonna have our team philosophy, but we're also trying to develop each individual guy uh, to make them the best. And that's kind of how we coach is, is on uh, individual basis a little bit. So um, as we go through it, a couple of keys to our success in coaching, not just on the offensive side, but in everything we do. Number one, let them know you care. 
Um, I think that's always number one. I think our kids are smart, right? They, they understand um, if, if we're trying to make it all about ourselves, we're trying to make it about how many wins I can put behind my last name, they're not gonna play hard for you. So let them know you care. And what does that mean? Let them know, yeah, they, they understand that you, they, they, you want them to be successful on the baseball field, but more about life, more about the classroom, more about how they're doing every single day. I think this year has been probably uh, the hardest year, and it's year two as a, as a head guy, but with this COVID stuff, these guys are going through a lot. Uh, they got their season shut down. They didn't know if they were going to come back. Now we're coming back. What does testing look like? To me, it's a lot. Now we're online schooling mostly. Uh, so to me, understanding how they're doing day to day is really important. Don't always talk to them about baseball. Talk to them about life. Talk to them about how their family's doing. Uh, luckily, in recruiting, we get to learn who mom and dad is, who brother and sister are. Um, and so we try to figure out not just about how their swing feels that day, but how they do on their history exam. How are they doing? Um, are they dating somebody? What's going on in their life? And I think if all you talk to them about baseball all the time, they don't really truly care or think you care about who they are as a person. And that's something we found to help us out with our success. Um, coach every player individually. Don't clone. Uh, this goes with Chad. This goes with the hitting side and everything we do. Uh, we try to coach the individual player. I feel like as, from hitting, a hitting standpoint, if I can make each guy the best that person can be, it's going to make our team a lot better. So um, they're not going to walk in our program and go, hey, I understand you've been hitting this way for 18 years, but today we're all leg kicking because that's what I like to do. That's not how we coach. We coach the individual guy, and whatever works for one guy might not work for the other. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of uh, video watching and, and different things to figure it out, but you've got to figure out what makes each guy tick. Uh, they, they're not all going to learn the same way. Teach and explain the fundamentals. I thought what Coach Webb said was, was uh, unbelievable. We try to keep it really simple at Texas State for the fact that we want to coach the mechanics. You come, and, you come and watch us, there's not a lot of crazy things going on, but we're going to teach the base mechanics uh, from the hitting side, the pitching, pitching side. We try to go get really good athletes that can, that can be successful and win baseball games. But for us, if they're not fundamentally sound, we're not going to win. And so teaching the fundamentals where, where you guys do such a great job uh, when they show up to our program, we can tell which guys have been coached and which guys haven't. So uh, we appreciate what you guys do for them. Practice the meat and potatoes daily. Uh, one thing, especially from you know defense and hitting, we want to be really good at the things that really matter. We're going to work on the other things, but when you come to our practice, just like he talked about his routine in practice, we're going to try to get as many ground balls as we can. We're going to try to do a really good job playing catch. We're going to get a lot of fly balls. We're going to get a lot of swings in. All right, we're going to get a lot of throwing. Our throwing drill is really important for our pitchers from bullpens to flat grounds. But we want to practice on the meat and potatoes daily. Yeah, we're going to work on our suicide squeeze. We're going to work on our safety squeeze. I always go to the adage, uh, when I played, I always felt like we had a slash in every round we did. And I look at my offense now, and I know UTSA is here, so don't take it against me, but we hardly slash in our program. I think we've slashed three times in five years since I coached the offense. We swing. And so I remember as a player, we did a slash in almost every round, and I started counting up how many slashes I did over my career and how many times I actually did it in the game, and it wasn't even comparable. So for us, we're going to practice what we do. And the meat and potatoes are important. We want to get more ground balls, more swings. The things that are really important, we're going to practice those things. And yeah, we're going to get to the small things because those are important too. But I really want to be important on the meat and potatoes um, every single day. There's more than one way to do things. Um, and I think that's important. We're, we're stubborn. I talk to our guys all the time. Um, you know, when, when my staff brings an idea to me about, hey, maybe this guy could do this differently. A lot of times as coaches, when that's said to us, the first thing we say is, that's not right. That's not right. And the reason we say that is because it's not our idea or it's not the way we're used to doing things. And so for us, being able to do more than one thing, I think, you know, with the hitting part of it, the launch angle and all the, all the new technology that's come into play, I think it's great for baseball. I think it's great for, for baseball the fact that our game is growing. Our game is growing in different areas. Doesn't mean we have to use it. But I know from my side, I've got to know it because a lot of guys are starting to use it um, in high school. They're using it in the, in the, in the summer balls. And so be, being able to talk about these things when they, when they show up, and maybe for that one guy, he's really bought into launch angle. He's really bought in to whatever it might be. I've got to be well-rounded well as a coach because i get, I got to coach that in, individual guy. If I just go, hey, listen, we ain't talking about launch angle because I don't believe in it, you're going to lose that one guy. So to me, it's about coaching each single individual guy, and, and there's different ways to do things uh, to make yourself successful. So uh, we got three team philosophies on our offensive side, um, and I'll go through each one of them. Uh, just like Coach Webb, we got a beautiful place. The turf um, is about the best thing I've ever seen, so uh, it really makes practice and games a lot easier. Our number one philosophy, attack mistakes in the middle of the field. Okay, attack mistakes. We talk about this all the time with our guys. I think from a hitting standpoint, the mechanics are obviously big. We're going to work on the mechanics, but I think the biggest thing for our team to have success, because we're going to face 
really good arms every night out is to have a really, really good approach. And to me, the, the, the approach every day we show up, sometimes the approach can change the mechanics. And so we beat down our guys with approach all the time to try to make our guys think more mentally, sometimes and physically. And so attack mistakes in the middle of the field. Okay, you first hear the word attack. The newest thing, or not really the newest thing, but the first thing is bat speed, correct? All right, bat speed is what we're always looking for when we're recruiting or we're talking about guys, the metrics. Everything you see on Twitter now is exit velo, okay? So how do we incorporate that into being a successful hitter one, we're looking for, we're trying to be aggressive. We want to see back speed. We are thinking aggressive. We're not up there looking to take a walk. We're looking to drive the baseball and yes, yes, yes mentality. Okay? We're talking about mistakes. And this is something that's really changed our program, I thought, from an offensive perspective is when I was trying to figure out, okay, our, our average is high, our power numbers are high, but our run totals are low. And it coordinated exactly with our walks and our hit by pitches. It 100% coordinated with, we didn't walk enough. And you think about that, you don't walk to the plate, and I'll get to patiently aggressive here in a second, but we weren't thinking about walking, but there was a better, we were swinging at pitchers' pitches compared to swinging at our pitchers. And so we're always trying to look for mistakes. Hunt in the middle of the plate, also understanding what height are we looking for, okay? We're really looking to hunt our pitch early in the count. Um, and so mistakes might be different for myself than another guy. And so we're always looking for mistakes as we go. We talk about the middle of the field, and I'll show you a diagram here in a second, where we actually show our guys what the middle of the field are. And we, under, we explained that we can, use the, we can use the entire field if we're thinking about attacking the balls in the middle of the field. If you're a little up front, you pull the ball. If you're a little late, you get at the ball and keep it fair. I hate foul balls, okay? I hate foul balls. Why do I hate foul balls? Because if you're, if you're up in the count or less than two strikes, a foul ball means you either had a bad approach or you're looking to do something, you're trying to attack the ball in the middle of the field. You either got the wrong pitch or you're off the wrong time. And so for our guys, we're trying to attack, attack the balls in the, in the middle of the field, all right? We're also looking for mistakes. And then the last, importantly, is we're not presetting where we're hitting it. Yes, we're thinking middle of the field, but wherever that ball's pitched, we're going to hit it there. The ball's middle, we're hitting middle. The ball's in, we're going to hit it in. The ball's away, we're going to hit it away. And we're really going to work on what are we good at. If we're not good at hitting the ball in, which everybody thinks they are, if we're not good at hitting the ball in, they'll swing at the ball in. So really building every day, and we'll talk about our drills in a second, of how we build these approaches into our philosophy um, as we go. One thing we, we did, and this is back when we had grass, and it changed now, we have to use more cones than anything, uh, but we actually labeled the middle of the field. You can see there's five gaps out here. Uh, we just took the chalker, uh, and we actually created five gaps. And what it did is it just showed them, it, it defined what the middle of the field was. From the scoreboard all the way to the left center gap, that was our middle of the field. So they, they understood there's a lot of room out there to hit. What this did for us was actually allowed a lot of competition into BP. And so what we do a lot of times, and we'll do this with the cones with the turf, is we actually will have rounds where each gap is a certain amount of points. So say we're doing an away round, and I'm a right-handed hitter, the, the, the right center gap is gap two. If you hit that gap and it's got to be hit hard, line drive, power ground ball, a ball driven, it's three points. You hit a ball in the middle of the field, which is the middle one, um, it's two points. The ball down the right foot line is one point. If you hit it foul, or if you hook it left of the three gap, which is the left center gap and the left field line, you lose all your points. And so it's a small thing to think about, but two things are happening. One, they've got an approach of what they're trying to do, and they're competing with it. The second part is they're having to be patient in there during BP. Because I see guys on the B time in BP, they're bad BP takers because all they do is swing. Every pitch that comes out on they swing. Okay? They price in there at night and just flip each other, uh, short toss every single night. They swing in the same spot on the same pitch every single time. We try to get away from that. We try to have an approach in BP every single day. We, we, it allows competition, but it also tries to be patient. We do it on the pull side. We'll do where we have to hit each gap. So now you're really being specific on what you're trying to look for um, at the plate, which also led to our walks as well. The devil's philosophy, okay? The other part is I, I don't like to single people to death, right? I don't, four hits to score a run, yes, we'll bite when we need to, we'll do certain things, but we're trying to drive the baseball. We're trying to get that guy to second base because he's in score position. We actually view our guys being in score position sometimes at first base. You hit a double, you score that guy. So every swing we take, we're trying to hit doubles. We're trying to drive baseballs. Looking for a line drive and turn it into two. Obviously, that's going to lead to more triples and more home runs um, as we go. I think if you're up there trying to hit homers, it's not going to work out for you. If you're trying to hit a ball and hit a line drive in the gaps, you're going to hit some doubles. Get your swing off with our approach. 